Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, my third secondary students. Welcome to the second semester of the Rose Online. Today, from your book, Traveler 6, we start with the second part of the final revision for Unit 1. I hope you enjoy it. So, today we will learn, basically, as you can see, two things. Number one, we're going to read fluently, and when we read fluently, it means we're going to remember the reading text in Unit 1 and apply some uh, you know, comprehension questions, true, false, and different uh, reading uh, scales. And for number two, as you can see here also, there's a second part, which is writing how to write an informal letter describing an event. So for number one, it's basically reading. And number two, we're going to write uh, or find some kind of tips that help us write uh, an informal letter describing an event or describing something happened. So if we get started, since you're in high school and you're, you know, third secondary uh, students and you're thinking about going to university and start a new uh, life, a new uh, career or decide uh, of staying and studying inside Saudi Arabia or going to study something different outside Saudi Arabia. So the big question for you, uh, which is I think it's on your mind, if you complete your high school study which university you will choose to attend. It could be either in uh, Saudi Arabia or outside Saudi Arabia, but you need to decide, and you actually should have started this earlier from the uh, middle school, to decide that you're going to study this uh, kind of, uh, you know, branch or study in this place for these years and what comes after. So you need to have made a plan for your study in the future so if you choose this university you have to say why what convinced you and you need to know some information you need to meet people to ask people who are graduated and to read about the university and so many things or too many information you need to uh, obtain so in the reading text for unit one you remember that we got you know all about you know career and what we going to choose for our future so if you are interested in studying at a university in an english speaking country which is outside saudi arabia an english speaking country we're talking about united states we're talking about canada australia uh, britain and some other parts in uh, europe so if you're interested in studying at university in an english speaking country what kind of information would you like to have? You like to have too many information. First of all, this university is ranked one, two, three. It has the branch that I wanted to study. Uh, it is uh, accredited in my country. It's accredited all over the world. What about the hours? What about the campus, the services? And, and you need to know these information before you go there. So we took also an example of a university which is in Indiana University which offers IEP which is intensive English program which is something good for you if you are a second language speaker and most of the time those who are graduated from Saudi Arabia they go for one year at least or two for preparing them into English or they have a side program called like this Indiana University which is IEP now, when we read, or if we have read this text before, which is about, you know, this university, let's try to find the meaning of some words, okay? So, in uh, reading text of Indiana University, uh, we got this sentence and this word founded in. So, Indiana University was founded in 1820. So, what does the word founded mean? Can you guess me the meaning of it? Uh, discovered, established, or known. It was established, of course. And here, all students admitted, all students agreed, and for three, many other forms of exercise and relaxation are readily available, it means willingly available. So in number one, Indiana University was founded in 1820. It means it was established in 1820. And number two, all students admitted to the program must have 
earned at least a high school diploma, it means all students agreed, not prompted and not allowed to join. All students admitted, means submitted some kind of, you know, uh, registration. They should have at least a high school diploma. And number three, many other forms of exercise and relaxation are readily or willingly available. And of course, not easily or frequently. And as we know, after every reading, we got, you know, vocabulary as we finished and also some reading comprehension question, we, we call it true or false. So answer true or false according to the information in the reading, as you remember the reading text in unit one. So this is taken from the reading one. To be admitted to the IEP, the Intensive English Program, students must have completed their secondary education. Is that true or false? Of course, if you want to go to the university, you should have finished your secondary education. Two, in level seven, students have more hours per week than in level six. And you think it's true, but it's false because it's not about the, you know, level seven has nine hours, uh, level eight has uh, 10 hours. No, sometimes level three has more hours than level four. So according to the reading text in unit one, this is false. Now let's read more and remember about the reading text. Read the brochure and choose the correct options. So we have A, B, C. One option is correct. You know, these are forms of multiple choice questions from the reading text. So number one, apparently the IEP, which is a short of intensive English program, is meant for somebody who what? A, is already studying at an American university. B, who comes from a non-English speaking country or who C, speaks English fluently. So this program, the IEP in, in, in Indiana University, is designed for whom? It's designed for those non-native speakers or those who have language to uh, English or their English is language to, so they're not native speakers. This is why uh, they need to take them there. So if you're Saudi and going to Indiana University, you have to follow the IEP because your mother tongue language is Arabic, it's not English. Two, according to the passage, after completing the IEP, students do what? A, students have the necessary background to attend university in the US. If you finish this, you got this kind of background. Two, or students can begin working for university or C, get a degree in English. So as we read, after completing the IEP, what can you do? A or B or C? You can have the necessary background to attend a university in the US. So your English now is ready for any university in the US. The third question, students on the IEP, students on this kind of program, which is the intensive English program in Indiana University, can what? Usually stay up late at night, have to study at least 24 hours per week, or have access to lots of entertainment. So it's not only all about education, also you can have some fun in some places according to the text in unit one. Now, uh, let's reorder the parts of the letter. Now, this is the second objective of the lesson, which is about writing. You remember, in every writing, we got introduction, we got the body, and we got the conclusion. And also, we got organization of the paragraphs who uh, we start, you know, with a, uh, you know, the introduction, with a topic sentence and sticking to the topic sentence, you know, write a draft, then uh, try to use, uh, you know, uh, rich vocabulary. And if you're writing in a persuasive essay or a convincing essay or just, you know, descriptive essay, or if you are writing a formal letter or informal letter to a friend. But here we're trying to write an informal letter to describe something happened. Okay. So, you may write this kind of informal letter to your friend, to your brother, to somebody you know, so you don't have to use a very formal language. So you can use short expressions, you can use uh, 
uh, any vocabulary you like, the same vocabulary or terminology that you use with your friends. So what do we start? Do we start at the beginning? If we reorder any kind of essay, we start with the main part, then opening paragraph, then greeting, sign off or closing paragraph. Of course, most of the time in the introduction, if this is a letter, you should start with a greeting and then you start with the opening paragraph and then the main part and the closing paragraph and then you write your name and sign off. So this is it. We start with the greeting. Assalamu alaikum, my friend Ali. And then you start with the opening paragraph. You can't believe what happened today. I saw a terrible car accident. I felt so sorry. There was, uh, you know, a jam of cars and I had to park to the right. And then you start with the main paragraph. You try to describe that you parked to the right and you started to ask people about, you know, details, how the hap you know, the accident happened, who was injured, anybody was, you know, uh, uh, God forbid, was killed or died. And, and, and finally, in the closing paragraph, you try to uh, say your opinion that the accident happened because somebody was using his mobile phone or someone crazy who violated or did not obey or disobeyed the uh, you know traffic rules. And then you finally sign off with your name. So it, let's try to remember some tips and advice that can help us uh, write an informal letter describing an event. So an informal letter describing an event, you start with a greeting, greet the person that you are writing to, uh, st then you go for the opening paragraph, you set up phrases to begin your letter, and say your, why you're writing, and briefly refer to the event, and say why uh, you like it or dislike it. So, Assalamu Alaikum, this is the greeting, uh, uh, my dear friend Ahmed, then you start with the opening paragraph and you say, use, you know, uh, some phrases to get attention to begin your letter with. You won't believe what happened today. It was crazy. And then say why you are, I'm writing to you this letter and I'm telling you about something terrible happened today. And you briefly refer to the event. I saw a terrible car accident at exit seven. There were too many crash cars. And then you say, if you like it, of course you don't like it. So you say it was terrible and I... Uh, really cannot forget uh, what I have seen and then in the main part you describe the event what happened uh, how the accident happened the atmosphere special clothes special things how many people uh, you know uh, injured uh, more details about it was you know you were delayed like an hour or so uh, until the ambulance and the police and other cars moved away and and then you say uh, why you dislike it because it's terrible and maybe the driver was using his mobile phone, was chatting, was using the internet, he didn't pay attention or disobeyed the traffic rules. And in a closing paragraph, you say, uh, you state anything that uh, you want to emphasize, like, uh, you know, many accidents recently started to happen because of speed, because, because of disobeying traffic uh, rules or because of using the mobile phone. And then finally use it, use uh, set phrases to end your letter. Anyway, I hope nobody get hurt. I hope you pay attention to your, you know, driving and not to use the mobile phone when you drive because you're my friend. And then hope to hear from you soon. Uh, uh, your friend Ali and Assalamu alaikum or uh, sincerely yours or whatever you want to choose the phrases that you want to end your letter with. And then you sign off, you know, when you sign off, you sign off with your signature and ending with your first name below that or your both names that's okay so that was the end of today and today what we have learned actually a couple of things were about writing and reading so uh there was no listening skill but we have you know talked about indiana and we got some true false multiple choice questions and uh, also we uh tried to speculate to make a decision and we talked in writing about how to describe an event and how to, uh, you know, stress an informal letter about something happened and also uh, something happened, uh, not anything, you know, normal happened, something really uh, crazy, funny, uh, frightening, uh, good, etc. So these are the references, Traveler 6 student book, Traveler 6 teacher's guide, and some photos and pictures from Google Art. 
And finally, for more information and lessons, you can visit us on uh, at our website, ain.edu.com. Follow us on Twitter at ain underscore edu and call us on this number for any technical uh, support or anything uh, you like to uh, ask about. Uh, I hope you a very good luck and I wish you all the best in your test and your, uh, your exams. Please uh, feel relaxed and prepare very well. All the good luck until I see you again. That was all for today and assalamu alaikum.